Hello friends. This video is based on a question posted on Power BI community forum recently. Uh, the ask was, um, there is a loan by customers by month and there is a flag to tell a customer has a loan in this month. And uh, the ask was a user select a month, find out for the selected month, how many customers also have a loan in the following month. For example, if I selected a January, uh, depending on the loan uh, flag of the customer, so I have let's say 10 customers, out of those 10 customers want to find out who are the customers who also has the loan in the February. So whatever month we select in the slicer, we check the customers with the loan and then also check the same customers uh, if they have the loan in the following month as well. The reason I'm doing this video, uh, especially time intelligence, and uh, I'm going to use next month function here. It's gonna be a very simple thing. We have seen it many times. Just for the folks who are starting new, working with Power BI or want to know about time intelligence, this video give you some idea about how those time intelligence function work. I did not use that sample data set because it was very, very small, uh, but the solution what I provided I'm looking to the same solution with my sales uh, data uh, model where we will see, okay, what customers has a purchase in this particular uh, month and how many of those customers also made the purchase in the following month. Let's get to Power BI and have a look at the solution. Here I have a, a matrix visual which has a sales by customer um, by month. January, February, based on what I have selected here. Uh, just normal slicer. And the sales, the measure is a sales measure, which is sum of sales. And um, what we're going to do is, so the ask here is just to again, um, to clarify that. If I select January, these are the customers who made the uh, purchase in, in, in January. So we want to see out of these customers, how many also purchased in February. It's like a, in the next month. If I selected February, then the following month, March and so forth, so on. Uh, so what we, I already created one measure, uh, another measure called the next month sales. Uh, that is just taking advantage of time intelligence function called next month. Uh, this is a DAX function and move the dates to the uh, uh, to the next month. Like the previous month, we have a previous month function and this is a next month. And basically, if I'm selecting January, it is giving me the sales of uh, February. So if we bring this measure here uh, in our matrix visual, just, okay. so Alexander Jenkins, has a sales in January and he also has a sales in, in, in February, in this case, next month sale. So we want to kind account or find out those customers who have sales in, in the month we selected and also in the uh, following month. Okay, so we'll start writing the uh, measure. I have this measure name called customer count next month sales. So what we need to do is first find out the customers which has the sales in the, what are the customers based on the slicer. And then out of those customers, what has the sales in the next month? Um, simply what we will do, I will create a, 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 a table where I will hold the customers and uh, store the customers. Um, to begin with, I will go summarize my fact table, which is sales and uh, group it by our customers. And what this will give me, uh, this particular summarize will give me based on the a month selected, the customer what has the sales, and then we will add the measure on top of this. So that is add columns. And uh, what we will call that measure um, as a name here, let's say next month sales. So that is the measure we already created next month sales. So now this what this what it is this what this is going to give us is a sales of number of customers which has the sales in the selected month with the value of the next month sales. So let's look at the count here. Uh, count of base table. 
I'm gonna put this as a name as a KPI card here and oh, where is my slicer so let's put the slicer month slicer back and here we have the slicer so let's say if I pick January or February so this is 1373 customer has a sales in February so that's what this is uh, this is what we're getting here in January we had 627 customers with the sales this is not customer with the next month sale the actually within that month the number of customers now we go back to our measure but now we know what the customers are and we also have their next month sales what we need to do is just filter this table where next month sale is not blank so next month sales customer so this will give us if we filter this table filter our base table where note is blank our measure which is next month sales so now if we use this as part of our count rows what this will give is out of those 627 customers in January how many of those also has a sales in February which is 18 in this case and if we go to February it's a 71 so now we are getting the sales in that but the number of customer within this selected month which is April out of those April 78 customers has the sales in the following uh, month uh, and what we can do is now bring this measure customer count next month sales in our visualization here and of course we will get the value one wherever there is a sales in the next month sale and we can make it a little bit uh, uh, conditional formatting here put in the icons here and remove all these uh, formulas here what we can do is icon only and what we can choose if value is greater than or equal to one number not percent and not percent max if we remove this this becomes max and then we can have okay I want check mark so basically what is going to happen is uh, instead of one we will see the check mark where there is a this customer has a sales in the following month and also we can do here is if we want we can change it to now a maybe make this as a, a bar chart and month and date is uh, what I will use on X axis because to it's a date type so it can fit all the months because it's a continuous and then I can have my this measure in here to see the trend and I can have my data label here turned on as well so now we can see uh, if we click on a month here 78 so these are the these are the customers which has the sales in um, in the following month based on the month we selected we can also get the uh, sales amount for the, for the one which has the future uh, like in the next month sales so we can do all sort of things with that measure um, this was a small video just to uh, showcase next month uh, or the time intelligent function how you can use it um, there are many other use cases. One thing which I wanted to say here is anytime you're working with the Power BI report, especially with the time intelligence, always add a calendar dimension in your model. I have a blog post uh, for a calendar dimension, how you can add one. There are lots of blog posts. I will put in the description of this video. Uh, but anytime you're starting a Power BI report, put a date dimension in there and also always use uh, date dimension for your time intelligence function because there's a lot of time intelligence function we can take advantage of uh, if we have a date dimension in our model. I will be doing few more videos from Power BI Community Forum. Uh, subscribe to my channel and till next video have a good day. Bye for now.